start in the middle and we just spiral around and I, I I started this without actually thinking about what I'm gonna draw anyways let's okay so this is the bottom of the nose and this is the edge of the eye this is the other edge of the eye uh, let's say this is the where the mouth turns into oh oh my god I am not doing this well <laughs> Oh no! What was I going for? Here, let me show you. That was the nose, and that was going to be the eye, and that was going to be the other eye, and there was going to be a map, but I knew that was it was just wasn't working. G'day everyone, I'm Jazza, and today we're going to explore how people do that spiral art challenge thing and see if I can just get better and better until I can do one by the end of this video. I think I started off on the wrong foot because I started off with the wrong pen. Maybe something a bit more like this. This is my... Tombow calligraphy pen. There you go. So you can do fine lines like that and then you can do pressure. So the idea is in theory you sort of go around and around and around. I'm not actually going to try and do it in this one. Let's say I want to do a smiley face. Pressure sensitive areas would be like that line and that bit 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 and that bit. There you go. There's a little <laughs> alien with three eyes. Great. Let's look up people who actually have done it. Yeah, like this. Like this. Look at that. The other thing that I've got working against me is that I'm trying to draw a nice spiral just by hand. This is like a nice spiral. That cannot be without assistance. Hey, this is a YouTube video. Who did this? Circle Line Art School. Draw a single spiral with a felt tip pen that can make a thin and thick line in light and dark parts. Okay, and they are doing it with a single continuous line. It is, you gotta admit, it is quite appealing and satisfying when they go thick to thin. And you don't see it happening until it's really sort of coming together. Oh, that's where your circle went wonky, buddy. I can't, I can't criticize though, because I've, I mean, yeah, no, I can't criticize. <laughs> Let's try this method, the plan it out and work from that foundation method. Give ourselves a nice big circle. I'm going to attempt to keep a fairly even circle all the way around by drawing semi-even circle sections leading in just so my spiral stays reasonably symmetrical. Like if it followed that as a grid I feel like I'd be in a pretty good place. I'm going to do a skull. So we've got the eye and then the other eye cavity here. Got a nose, got the cheekbones and then that goes around. We've got the front of the jaw. Something like that. I feel like if I can make that look cool, I've done pretty well. All right, let's give this a go. So right off the bat, I've got a very stark contrast in my spiral between the cavity of the eye and the open area of the skull. I gotta say having my, uh, my circle indicators for where my spiral should be is hugely helpful. But you can see that uh, as I further go out in my spiral because I'm keeping the lines semi uh, similar distances apart. It means that I'm leaning more towards the side where the lines are the thickest. It requires a lot of course correcting as you go because I'm finding that my lines are getting more uneven the further out I'm going. I can't just anchor myself on my wrist anymore. I have to sort of be a little more accurate in my broader lines and it's getting harder and harder the further out I go. But it's also more and more satisfying as I can actually see the artwork slowly appearing. It is certainly a challenge, but it's also pretty cool in a way I am reasonably surprised by. I'm also learning that the uh, direct crosses of lines are the hardest to make look like anything, specifically when you have a line through the spiral rather than alongside it or sort of in a semi-similar direction, simply because you are reminded by the fact that your spiral has to be really narrow and close together as you go around to make it look like anything. Okay, that's my first one. Hey, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, so what I was talking about is whenever there's a line that goes directly through the spiral like this, like in that outwards direction, it's really hard because you have to go like just these little dots that indicate that direction that actually worked really well. The thing that worked the least was the my smoothness following the spiral. I feel like one of the ways to mediate that will be to work with a turntable. So I have a Lazy Susan. The purpose of these is like when someone's like, pass the salt, then they turn the Lazy Susan and a projectile throws it. Here's the salt. All right, I'll mark that on the center of the paper. There you go, that's the center of my spiral. See now, drawing these circle marks, in theory, should be a lot cleaner and easier because I don't have to move my hand. Oh, oh, yeah, look at that, perfect. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, okay. Is not as foolproof as I thought it would be. I'm revising my plan. I have an actual, actual turntable. There we go. All right, just tape down the corners. So in theory, this will be much more even and smooth if I just put my pen down here. I think it still sort of comes up to me to control the line a little bit because I'm, whether consciously or subconsciously, moving the pen a little bit. This is more even. It's because I'm, because my palm resting on it is actually helping, except it's grabbing the tape. It's annoying. All right, so now we're gonna do the high tech spiral challenge. Definitely not cheating, guys. This is just innovating. I mean, surely other people have cheated. So they do have a sketch that they're using. So I guess that's an acceptable part of the challenge. There's the Marilyn Monroe one. Now that's interesting, because when I see this, you can see that in some areas, they actually just wobble the line out a little bit, as well as using thick to thin to create some of the texture, some of the sense of weight in different areas. Oh my God. That's very impressive. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna try and do a face now. We're, gonna, we're leveling up. Let's go a little artistic, sort of three quarter view. And this time, though I have the spiral help from my machine, I'm gonna see if I can do a bit of shading. All right, so I got stuck into my turntable spiral challenge. And I have to say, uh, the, the turntable hurt in more ways than it helped, which was a little bit surprising to me. I th genuinely thought it would just be an easy cheat. And it is sort of in terms of keeping a relatively even spiral, but actually the hardest part of the spiral challenge is knowing where the thick and thin lines should go, especially if you're trying to do something that is, you know, indicative of shading or gradients. You can see, especially early on through the spiral challenge, my position of where I was drawing the spiral kept moving. Initially, I thought it would be just like a, a record, you know, those old school record players where my pen was the needle and the record would move and I'd just go heavy or soft. But my brain and hand kept wanting to draw the spiral. So I would keep moving forwards into the spiral and end up ahead. It would actually displace me for where I needed to know and understand where the thick and thin lines go because my brain and hand wanted to draw the spiral. The other thing that was far more confusing doing it this way was the fact that my brain had to constantly, constantly reinterpret the shape and the form I was seeing and drawing. At least when you're drawing a spiral just by hand, the drawing is in the same position. Whereas with this turntable, I couldn't get comfortable knowing what I was drawing and I actually couldn't adapt or slow down in areas I needed to be more accurate. If anything, actually, it just kept speeding up because the further out I got in the spiral, I had a lot less time to figure out uh, where the thick and thin should go. You'll also notice the further out I went, the further apart my lines got. I feel like this was pretty unintentional and again, in large part due to the fact that the further out in the spiral I went, the more control I lost because of how fast things were moving and how constantly I had to readjust and reassess visually and adapt my brain. And yeah, it was actually much more confusing uh, and frustrating than I thought it would be. I thought I had an easy answer there, but no. I, I think that actually turned out pretty cool. Honestly, I don't think the turntable actually really helped. This is the person who did the drawing like a printer. And I know I've seen, there you go, them do a spiral drawing. They've done a lot of those and a lot of other really tricky and interesting uh, art challenges. So go check out their channel. So let's see how the DP does it. Oh, a compass. Great. Maybe I should, maybe I should have got a freaking compass. And they're doing the line, like the shading style. So you could see that they're building up gradients. Oh my God, it's mind-blowingly intimidating. <laughs> now sort of slowing down and, and going over the darker areas to get the right depth of shading with the line. And then it all comes together as the gradients are finished and there it is. I mean, that looks amazing. Now that one went outside in, which is interesting. Whereas this one is going inside out. That looks really cool. Oh, they did one with an actual turntable. This is inspired by the gramophone. They did the turntable one, but Better. <laughs> I mean, even watching this, at least it's a two minute video, so it doesn't like, it doesn't warp your brain too much, but watching this, like nonstop, makes you dizzy. Okay, there it is. But yeah, like before that, it's just like, 
And now I'm self-conscious that that's what I've done to you in my video. <laughs> this time, I'm just gonna hand draw the circle. I'm just gonna slow right down. I wanna go comic book slash cartoon-esque and add intensity and try and pick something with a lot of contrast so that whatever I do stands out and the thick to thin line thing can serve a lot of purpose. I've decided to go in the direction of Venom. I think especially because he's black and white. So it's gonna be a little easier on me in terms of the, uh, the thin to thick line placement, but it gives me room to stretch myself and add a lot of intensity to the image so that if it works well, then it can work amazingly well if I can pull it off. So I got stuck into Venom and I realized pretty quickly that although he's very high contrast, almost like, you know, black and white in a lot of parts, there's a little bit of muddiness in terms of making sure that, you know, the inside of the mouth is shaded, but then also to stand out from that, the tongue had to be light. But as I went further out in the drawing, I realized that the background was sort of light and then the tongue to stand out sort of had to be dark, but I had to sort of blend the two at the halfway point. It, it got pretty tricky. I did the best I could and I took my time and got into it and I feel like it uh, it was coming together pretty well. But I think the only thing that could make this whole process more complete and feel even more right is if you can enjoy the rest of this artwork being created backed by a rendition of Dead or Alive's You Spin Me Right Round as sung by Venom. I, I get to know your name, <laughs> Spider-Man. Trace your private number, baby. <laughs> All I know is that we look like a lot of fun. Open up your living arms and watch out. Here I come. You spin me right round, Spider Man, right round. Like a web, baby. Round, round, round. You spin me right round. And there it is. It couldn't have been brought to you in a more perfect way. And though the piece could be more perfect in a lot of ways, it still looks like Venom. I got that done, which looks good. And I've explored the spiral art challenge in a few different ways. And as I anticipated, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's quite tricky, but at the same time, it's quite satisfying to watch and quite uh, interesting to do in that it turns on the puzzle and problem solving part of your brain, which is quite fun to exercise every now and then. So I hope you have found this as weird and satisfying and interesting and dumb as I have. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. This was certainly a challenge. I don't know if it's my greatest strength, but I'm certainly glad I gave it a go. I'd be interested to know what you guys thought about how I went. Leave a comment down below. Otherwise, there are more videos over there you're bound to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and join me on this journey through the spiral art challenge. And until next time, I'll see you later.